Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a festive Yule log. So let's get started. This very special cake has a couple different components going on. There's the cake, the filling, the frosting, and those meringue mushrooms. To make all these delicious things, you'll need all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, super fine sugar, powdered sugar, just a little bit for dusting, butter, cream, salt, vanilla. We have a bunch of eggs that we will be separating, cocoa powder, a little cream of tartar, and some chocolate for melting. For the cake, we're gonna separate seven eggs. I want seven egg whites and seven egg yolks, and your oven should be at 350 right now. This is my birthday cake, so every year when my mom comes to visit, she makes me a Yule log for my birthday, even though it's not even in winter. I love it that much. I've also lined a half baking sheet with parchment paper, so it's ready to go once everything's in there. Set your eggs aside for a moment, grab a bowl, we're gonna sip things out too. Now we're gonna measure out two thirds of a cup or 80 grams of all-purpose flour, a third of a cup of cocoa powder, that's 30 grams. We're also gonna add half a teaspoon of salt for contrast, there we go. We're gonna set our scale aside, give this a whisk. In the bowl of your mixer, add your seven yolks, I'm gonna beat my yolks on medium speed until they're doubled in volume and like velvety and nice. Okay, now we're gonna add our three quarters of a cup or 150 grams of sugar and beat this for about two minutes and you'll see it just like become this wonderful like lemony color. It's gonna look so beautiful. While that's mixing, grab another bowl and another set of mixers because we're gonna mix the egg whites up. Okay, I think that's ready. Oh my gosh, so aerated, just beautiful. Now, we're gonna add the flour mixture. And mix on low, it'll combine. I'll give it one scrape down and we're gonna set this aside and work on the whites. This is like thick and chocolatey and amazing. And have you noticed, what did we not add to this? Didn't add any leavening agents. You're like, where's the baking powder? Where's the baking soda? We're not using it. We're going old school with this cake and using egg whites as leavening agents. So we're beating lots of little air bubbles in here. Add that into your mixer. I'm mixing these on medium speed until the eggs get frothy. I wanna give them like a little bit of a preliminary mix. And then we're gonna add 50 grams or a quarter cup of granulated sugar. Slowly add in your sugar. We're gonna mix this for about four minutes or until you have stiff, glossy peaks. Here's how you can tell if you're done. The meringue just sticks to the, uh, the whisks. This is a stiff peak, trust me, it's all stuck there. We're gonna add the meringue in three batches and fold it in. The first batch is a sacrifice because you're just lightening it up. Oh, it's like glue on the bottom, look at this. That's very thick. When you're folding this in, what you're doing is scraping the bottom of the bowl, coming up and cutting down. Scrape, come up, cut down. Now we're gonna add another third of the meringue in. At this point, I hope your oven was already at 350 and you've lined your baking sheet because from here on, everything kind of just has to happen, so you need to be prepared. But for now, we're just gonna fold in until you don't see any streaks. Last batch of meringue is going in here. Give it a little swipe and see if you're finding any streaks, which I clearly am because I'm not done yet. And then also really scrape the very bottom of the bowl down because you'll find some extra chocolatey bits there. What I'm gonna do is use my whisk and then just gently whisk it around. Look at this consistency, beautiful. Grab your prepared baking sheet. We're gonna transfer this batter right into our pan. Ooh, it's so beautiful. It's like chocolate mousse basically with just a little bit of flour added. Use an offset spatula and just smooth it out into a thin layer. This will not really self-level in the oven, so you have to give it the best start. Our cake's gonna go into the oven 350 for about 20 minutes or until the center springs back when touched. We're making our super cute meringue mushrooms. You're gonna wanna measure out six tablespoons of extra fine or super fine sugar. Whenever you make a meringue, save yourself some heartbreak and just don't use regular granulated sugar. It takes too long for it to dissolve in the eggs. Okay, this is measured out. Two eggs is all you need. It actually makes a lot of mushrooms. Separate the whites out from the yolk. To my two egg whites, I'm adding an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar, half of a quarter. I'm mixing the egg whites along with the cream of tartar on medium high until they're frothy and doubled in volume. We're giving them a head start before we add the sugar in. 
If you've made meringue before, you know the key is to add the sugar in slowly. Slow, low, 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 low. If possible, you really want to use a hand mixer for this as opposed to a stand mixer because you only have two egg whites and it's hard for a stand mixer to mix that little volume. And right now your oven should be at 200 degrees, very low temperature. The sugar's added, but look, this is what I have right now. It looks more like royal icing than it does meringue. We're gonna be mixing this up for about five minutes on like close to high. Okay, this is nice. It's pretty stiff and glossy. Get your mixer. This is your glue. That's gonna make this really easy to pipe. So you're gonna want a piping tip, a round one, a little bit too big. This is a 1A, that should be fine. And when you fill your piping bag, try to not have any air bubbles in there because that is annoying. It'll make your mushrooms a little bit more difficult. All right, our mushrooms are piped in two parts. We have the stem and the cap. For the stem, you're just gonna start off right like that. Pipe up, ah. Don't worry about that little tip flopping over. We're gonna clip them after they bake. Start at the bottom, go up. So I'm pressing the bag as I move the tip upwards so I have a little column. Some of them could be big. You could have some small ones. For the cap, hover the tip about half an inch above the parchment paper. Squeeze and you'll see what happens. So I'm hovering, I'm squeezing, and a cap forms. Stop pressing the bag, pull up and swirl at the same time. It's exactly what you do if you ever make macaron. Don't worry if these aren't like perfect on top because we're gonna fix it with a little bit of cocoa powder. All these little tips, those are fine. We're gonna snip them off after baking. All these little tops, if you're horrified by them, like I don't like this at all, you can dampen your finger with a little bit of water and then tap them down. You're gonna use a smidgen of cocoa powder and just a little bit on some of the mushrooms. So here, you can tap it for the base. It gives them like a nice texture and makes them just look more real. And then for the caps, we're gonna do a little bit as well. These guys are going into the oven 200 degrees for two hours, low and slow so they stay nice and white and they'll be crisp through and through. While your cake is baking, grab a clean, smooth-ish kitchen towel, not one of the terry cloth ones, but a smoother kind. And you're just gonna lay it flat, get some powdered sugar and a sifter, and we're gonna sugar our towel. Give it a nice sprinkling of powdered sugar. This is gonna be what we roll our cake in, otherwise it would stick and maybe tear the cake. But if you dust it with powdered sugar, it'll come right off. You wouldn't wanna use flour for this, for example, because you have to cook flour. Flour should be cooked before consumed, but powdered sugar is totally safe. All right, there we go. I'm putting this right here because I'm gonna use it one more time. And now we're gonna be ready for when the cake comes out because as soon as it's ready, you need to roll it out while it's soft. And if you over bake your cake, that's when your cake can crack. So you want it just done and roll it up right away. Fresh out of the oven, look at this. It's ready because I can press down, it's bouncing right back up. With confidence, you're gonna flip this. Three, two, one. Lift this up carefully. Peel the paper off. Okay, it smells amazing. Now we're going to roll it. So roll the long side, and then as I go along, this is optional, it's gonna add a little bit more powdered sugar. And you don't wanna go so tight that you're compressing the cake, just tight enough that it has a roll shape and it's gonna remember who it is when you unroll it. This has to cool down for a full hour and then we'll unroll it and fill it. Do it the right way and just place this right onto a wire rack so the steam can kind of escape from the bottom too and it'll cool down more efficiently. Set it aside and now for the mushrooms. So my cake is basically almost cool. Let's take a look at these beautiful mushroom pieces and get them assembled. Use a pair of scissors and just snip the tip right off the top. And if you're wondering how am I gonna attach these together, the answer is always chocolate. <laughs> Melt two ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. I have this in a little bowl. Grab one of the mushroom caps, apply some chocolate to the bottom, then just place that on and look at that. It's so beautiful and the bottom already looks like a real mushroom because it has that dark part, looks like the little rills. 
This will make more mushrooms than you need to put on the log, but the great thing is everyone will get a piece of cake and a couple meringue mushrooms with the chocolate because they're really delicious and they have a nice crunchy texture. My mushrooms are all done so cute, and now we're gonna make our whipped cream filling. Cold cream, cold bowl, cold whisk, that's the rule. 300 ml, one and a quarter cups of cold cream, a third of a cup of powdered sugar. Start mixing that up. Keep an eye on this because whipped cream goes from amazing and perfect to curdled in a blink. And while that mixes, we're gonna add uh, a half teaspoon or so of vanilla. My final whipped cream secret to you is never finish it on the machine. Just take it off and whisk it up by hand. Yeah, that's nice. <sighs> Look at that, that's a perfect whip. So we're gonna unroll our cake now and be careful, go slow. This looks very soft though. Nice and soft. We folded this when it was hot, and that way it's gonna remember how to be rolled. It won't crack when it rolls back up. Create an even layer of that frosting, so move it all the way into the roll. Just smooth this out into an even layer, and you'll want like just an inch at the very end. I actually like to bring the whipped cream all the way to the edge here. We're gonna roll this up now, perfect. Look how cute that is. Okay, I'm popping this into the fridge just to hang out and like firm up a little bit while we make the frosting. Into a large bowl, I'm adding 284 grams or one and a quarter cups of room temperature, really soft butter. Specifically, I'm adding eight tablespoons or 48 grams of cocoa powder right into here. Mix it up, scrape the bowl down as needed, and if you have a mess, make sure you clean it up looks beautiful to me. You see streaks galore. So let's scrape the bowl down. This is beautiful and silky. Let's add two and three quarter cups of confectioner sugar, 340 grams. The key to a good frosting like this is going low and slow. You don't wanna whip a lot of air into it. It'll be harder to like get a beautiful silky texture. Quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm also gonna add two to three tablespoons of cream. It's really about the texture because you want it to be like a nice, delicate, soft, creamy texture and not rip the cake when you're decorating it. That looks great. I got some fresh rosemary from the garden. I'm adding this into my simple syrup that I made uh, earlier today. It's cool, so it's not hot. It's not gonna wilt the rosemary. Grab some fresh cranberries and throw those in as well. And then once they're totally covered, you're gonna take them out and let them sit here for a second just so they can get a little bit sticky and lose some of their excess. Add some sugar into a bowl. It looks beautiful and snow covered. Same for the cranberries, just toss them in, cover with sugar, and then pop them onto a sheet. It'll dry out and crystallize, but you can use them whenever you want. Everything is set, so here's the deal. I'm gonna trim off just the very edge of this so it has like a nice pretty front. Now, at an angle, you're gonna cut the cake one more time. This is the little branch sticking off the side that makes it look so cool and just like really charming. So maybe like three inches or so for the short side. And now this will go like that on the side and it'll look so cute. Find a platter that you wanna use. This is big enough and it's Christmas themed, so it's perfect. Lift it. And then this goes right here on the side, just like that. Now we're gonna carefully slather on some frosting. So let's get a bit at a time and use your spatula just to smooth it out. This maybe would have been easier if you just frosted the whole thing and then cut it, but it's totally either or. So chose my path and I'm sticking to it. It's fine either way. Scrape the side. The finishing touch for our cake comes from an everyday kitchen utensil, the fork. So all you need to do is Slide that fork down the edge. It could be in a straight line, but actually looks better if you give it a little bit of like a curve here and there. Just clean your fork off every once in a while so that it doesn't get too gloopy. Almost done. Let's pop those mushrooms on. Look how cute this is gonna look right here. What? Okay, we're gonna go to town. Add your mushrooms in wherever you want. Now we're gonna add our sugared rosemary, which looks so frosty and amazing. Add your sugared cranberries, just hither and thither, make it look pretty. Couple more mushrooms, just like a little one here. The final touch is the lightest dusting of snow ever, just a little bit. 
this is what a holiday feast is waiting for at the very end. That was so delicious. It's like all the holiday memories is coming right back. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my holiday playlist.